John Fung once told me, he heard a John once say that we human beings are all the same, but we're different. But when you come down to it, we're all the same. And one of the meanings of that is that we all have the same basic problems, but they don't all res respond to the same approach. You see this in the forest tradition itself as a whole. And there's no one forest tradition technique for meditation. When people came to see a John Mun, he would assign different techniques to them. A John Lee, who probably wrote out the most detailed of any of the techniques in the forest tradition, left at least two different ways of working with the breath. But he would talk about other topics as well. Recollection of the Buddha, contemplation of the body, and the problem of ours, contemplation of death. The point being that we all have to find the way that will work for us. And in some cases, there's not just one way that will work. In John Lee's explanation, you want to have one technique, which is your home base, and he recommended the breath because it's the safest of all the techniques. But then there are other techniques that have to be the places where you go foraging. In other words, you have to look for a solution, say, to the problem of lust or the problem of anger, the problem of sleepiness. Sometimes the breath is not the topic for that particular problem. So you need to have a wide range. We see this in the canon as well. When the Buddha taught breath meditation to his son, Rahula, he didn't teach just breath meditation. He taught contemplation of not-self, contemplation of impermanence. This was even before the breath. Contemplation of the elements, making the mind like the elements as a way of developing patience. Contemplation of the body, the Brahma Viharas. In other words, he wanted Rahula to have a full set of tools. There are all the ten recollections that the Buddha taught, all kinds of topics. And it's up to us to figure out which particular themes are going to work for us and which ones will work at different times. There's no one-size-fits-all in the Buddhist teachings. More recently, especially in the 19th century, when Asia was amazed by all the superiority in terms of firepower, at least, that the West had. They attributed it to the fact that the West was able to pare things down to the essentials. And so in some cases they did a reductionist take on the Buddhist teachings, trying to boil everything down to one technique or two. But that ignores the fact that you know people are all have that aspect where they are different. And a problem comes up. And you have to find out which way is going to work for you. You have to learn how to read yourself. And this is a large part of discernment right there. If all you have to do is just know one technique and just apply it relentlessly, it wouldn't take much discernment. Now, any fool can do that. What's required, and this is an essential part of the middle way, is that you figure out what's just right for you right now, what's appropriate for you right now. Just as in the middle way, sometimes intense effort is right, and sometimes very gentle effort is right, depending on what's needed. And in seeing that, you develop your discernment. So sometimes you have to work really hard, sometimes you have to be very gentle, but in learning how to read yourself, that's how the discernment comes. You become more and more sensitive to what the mind is doing what the results are and what you need to do in response. That's the basis of, of insight. That's the basis of discernment. So as you're trying to get the mind to settle down, those are the big questions. How do you get the mind to settle down? How do you get it to enjoy where it is, get some refreshment out of it? And then there are the questions of insight. Here again, the Buddha didn't teach one single technique. He just set up some questions. 
How should fabrications be regarded? How should they be seen with insight? Those are the questions you ask. And it's in answering those and figuring out how to answer them that your discernment develops. That, as the Buddha said, is one of the signs of someone's real discernment is to know how to answer a question. It's not that we're trying to clone awakening. All the tools that the Buddha gave for discernment are tools for questioning. Even the teachings on inconstancy, stress, not self, those are questions to ask. Something comes up in the meditation that you find yourself gravitating to, getting stuck on. You ask yourself, is this constant or not? Well, if it's not, if you can see any inconstancy in it, then that's a sign this is not where you want to go. This is not your goal. But then the next question is, well, is, this, is this a tool along the way? And that requires even more discernment. So take your basic techniques. Make them your home base. And then learn how to read the mind to see where you are and what type you are. The, as the Buddha said, there are some who start out with insight and go into tranquility, and others who start out with tranquility and go into insight. And then there are those who have to develop the two together. In his case, it seems that he developed the two together. The meditation technique that he taught most was breath meditation. And he taught it both as a concentration technique and as a discernment technique. Because after all, with the breath you're trying to get things calm. But before you get things calm, the Buddha teaches you how to see things in terms of fabrication. The breath is your bodily fabrication. In other words, it creates your sense of the body right now. Then there's mental fabrication, perceptions and, it, and feelings. In both cases, the Buddha says, once you see that process of fabrication, then you learn how to calm it. So you're doing both insight and tranquility at the same time. And there's verbal fabrication in the instructions themselves. You know, how you're telling yourself, you train yourself to breathe in and out in a sense into the whole body, breathe in and out sensitive to whatever potential that there is for a rapture or pleasure, trying to develop it as much as you can. But those are things you tell yourself to do. That's verbal fabrication. Once there's a sense of ease and well-being, you try to spread it around. And these instructions actually raise some questions. How do you breathe in a way that gives rise to rapture? How do you breathe in a way that gives rise to pleasure? How do you spread it around? And John Lee gives some helpful tips. By having you work with the breath energies in the body. How do you breathe in a way that you have a sense that the whole body is breathing and it's all breathing together? And learning how to do that, you begin to notice there are times when you push things too much, other times when you push them not enough. Times when you have to be allowing, and a few times when you have to force things. And the question is when? And that's what, something you've got to learn how to read. How to develop your sensitivity to what you're doing and the results that you're getting. And figure out what's right for you. So this way we take advantage of the fact that we are different. And not only different from one another, the mind goes through different stages. It will have its different defilements that will require different approaches. And it's learning how to read what's going on and have some sensitivity. There can be no discernment without this sensitivity to what the mind needs. Think of that image of the cook. The cook who learns how to read his master. The foolish cook doesn't take, doesn't bother, just keeps churning out food, which the master may like or may not like, but finally decides he's sick and tired of this cook because the cook isn't paying any attention. It's the cook who pays attention to what the master seems to like. We'll provide more of that. That's the cook who gets rewarded. So try to be sensitive to what, what's needed right now, and have a range of tools that you can pick up 
to deal with whatever contingency comes along. And that's how the mind both settles down and gains insight. The concentration itself becomes more sensitive. Your insights become more sensitive. And that sensitivity is what will take you where you want to go.